episode. Bye! Is it time to take your life to the next level? Are you tired of playing small and repeating the same cycles in your life? I invite you to tune in to the Art of Living Big podcast. It's a show that's part brain, part spirit, and part possibility. I'm Betsy Paik, the host, and I'm an author, a speaker, and a trainer of NLP. And each week, I share new ideas to help you think differently about what could be possible for your life. Are you ready? Let's go live big. Right, Josh, can you see what you're saying? I was saying uh, about the fact that I feel we live in a world now where medication is obviously growing because problems are growing. And I only feel that it's going to get worse because and when I it's quite a silly thing to say well the problems are growing but the problems are growing because of the world that we live in so things like mental health going back to that is growing because 20 years ago we didn't have what we have at our fingertips information false information on social media fake news things that have developed people into worrying more uh, that have developed other mental health issues that have led to depression you know before depre- depression, I'm using, and I'm going to use depression as an example because it's the most obvious and it's probably one of the most common out there. You go to a doctor and you say you're depressed. A doctor doesn't have the time uh, to, 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 to look through your life bit by bit and, and cure the problem. Now, I can tell you from working in health and fitness that if you came to me and said that you were depressed, I wouldn't put your medication. I might put your medication to start with to numb the noise and to really really just deflate the problem as in numbs you to the point that you can't worry anymore but i wouldn't put you on it for much longer than 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 to 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 just get you out of scarcity mode because things like natural sunlight exercise movement diet sleep these are all things that are the reason you are depressed There are other reasons, but these are the five key factors that you really need to address when you are depressed. How are you sleeping? If you're sleeping, because we know that being sleep deprived is is horrific. How are you eating? Again, if you're eating. A lot of I know a lot of people that are depressed and upset and down about life actually don't eat because they're they're, they're, when when a friend of mine was going through depression, he wasn't eating. Big problem. How much sunlight are you getting? How much natural daylight are you getting? Being locked up in your bedroom, depressed, on medication, is essentially a, a route to nowhere, is it not? You, you're, you're, you know, you're, oh, I'm depressed. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pills to make me not depressed, to numb the pain, but I'm still going to keep in the same routine as to why I'm depressed. How, how does that work? It doesn't. Um, exercise, again, people raise their eyebrows when you say, oh, yeah, just go down the gym and exercise. Moving your body is is what your body was made to do. There's a reason why people in the Stone Ages or or years ago weren't getting depressed because they were out hunting. They were doing what they were put on this planet to do. Hunters and gatherers, moving their body, moving their body, moving their body. Um, so, you know, that needs to be looked at. But again, my point with all of this, if you've fallen off track with, with what I'm saying is... <clears throat> Going to a doctor and saying you were depressed will only get you one thing. It will get you medication. You will then be put through to speak to a psychiatrist on the NHS, which will take another six months to finally get in with. Now, by the time that you finally got in with the psychiatrist, you'll be so hooked on these depression, antidepressant pills that you probably won't even feel that you need to talk about the problems because they're so numb now. When that is the wrong way to do it. Um, So if you're listening to this and you're suffering with depression or any mental health issues, go to the doctor. Of course, go to the doctor. That's the first bit of advice. Go and see a doctor and tell him that you are not well because you are not well. Appreciate that it's an illness. It isn't for life. You're not going to be like that forever. A lot of people seem to think that they're depressed and there's no way out of it. But understand that the problems are greater than than some um you know diazepam or whatever the medication that they will give you these problems they need to be addressed they need to be spoken about they need to be talked about they need to be read about they need to be rehearsed they need to be worked on through natural mechanisms like eating well sleeping well exercising moving the body socializing with people you find a depressed person lacks all of what i've just said um, so I know it's a bit of a rant, but it's something that I'm very passionate about, that you go to a doctor, obviously they don't have the time to talk to you. If that was the case, they wouldn't. They, there might be a patient in the waiting area that's, that's dying of cancer that has a lump that needs to be looked at today. Um, so obviously the doctor can't sit with you for hours talking about life um, and about how your diet should be different. But I'm just saying I don't agree with the medication system. I don't, not, not, not for mental <clears throat> illness. 
Well, that's the same thing with the Tourette's. Is I, it was, twitching was from excessive thinking, which causes the twitches. Went on the medication, slowed my brain down, twitching reduced, so you think the tablets work. And then nine years later, all those thoughts in my head that I never thought about just were just too much, just drove me crazy. Came off the medication, processed all those thoughts, meditated, and then there was no more nonsense coming into my brain. So I do agree. Medication, even something like an e-cigarette for a person who's addicted to smoking, should be temporarily, like two, three weeks until you get your shit together. Instead, people just get used to feeling that numbness, as you say, with the depression tablets or an e-cigarette or whatever, or not twitching when you take a tablet, that you just, just take the tablet and you forget where the problem came from because it's so far down the line. Mm. And I see people take tablets all the time for m- multiple things and it becomes too comfortable to a, go back and then address what could be traumatic issues that you don't even remember were there anymore. So it is dangerous, but it's a tricky subject because it's like you save yourself now in hopefully to live tomorrow, or do you trust nature and God will like get you where you need to be and take a risk, but then you risk losing something or somebody. Someone's knocking at your door, okay? This is the example that you need to give. This is, this is the analogy that I like to give. Someone's banging at your door. You're in your house. You live in your house, yeah? Think of your house as your head. You're living in it. That's what we all do. We have a body, we live in our... If you're a regular listener, you'll have heard me talk about crypto and how it's the future. I've learned from all my mistakes through trial and error since 2015, and I never make a mistake twice. I was going round in circles investing small amounts that I decided just to trust my intuition and go for it properly with big money. And so I borrowed £7,000 on the credit cards, which was a massively ballsy move, which I would tell no one to do, and got my balance up to 35 k in two months. So I've decided to set up a Discord group where I will inform the group when I'm placing my trade and what coin I'm trading so you can copy me if you wish. I compound my balance but you can trade with whatever amount you can afford to lose. I trust myself and my system enough to trade with a million pounds which I will do one day soon but that's me. You're in control whether you copy me or don't. There is no fee. Join my Discord group to receive real-time notifications when I trade. Link is in the podcast description. Whether you join or not I will still be trading. The only difference is you can do too. Our heads. We try not to, but essentially we, we, we do. That's humans. We, we like to mull on our thoughts. We like to worry. We, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but I know I do it. So I'm sure that most other people could do it as well. It's not healthy. So going back to my point, someone's banging on the door of your house. The door of your house is your head. Let's use this analogy, okay? Someone's banging the fucking thing down with a hammer, okay? Someone's banging on the door with a hammer. How loud is that, do you reckon? Very fucking Very loud. Fucking loud. What the medication is doing is it's taking that hammer out of a person's hand and it's giving them a fluffy toy to bang on your door with. Is this a good... Did you understand where I'm going with this? Now, what's going on? Are they still banging on your door? Yes. Yes, but what are they banging on the door with? A fluffy, a fluffy toy. And what noise is that fluffy toy making? Nothing. You got no, Thank yeah, you. you. Exactly. So we've not dealt with the banging on the door. We've just dealt with the noise of it. Exactly. with medication now what you really want to do what you really want to do is go downstairs open the door tell the guy to fuck off <laughs> stop banging on my fucking door you open the blind get sunlight in yeah, you go yeah. to the stream but, but no the first water. thing you want to do is go downstairs see who's banging on your door who the fuck is banging on my door? The fluffy toy. With, no, no, no. They're not on the fluffy toy. We've oh, not no. given him the fluffy oh, toy. The fluffy yeah. toy is the analogy that I've gone and right. got medication, okay? But you go downstairs and you see who the fuck is banging on my door. At this, not just banging on it once or twice. You're banging on my door all day. I'm going to open that door and I'm going to confront what is banging on my door. Now, medication. Give me some ideas of what medication are. Um, uh, well... I would say therapy, but that's not really no. A no, specific go thing. to a doctor. What are they giving you? Medicine. Medicine. Pharmaceutical, very powerful shit made in a lab. Cool. Which alters the chemical imbalance of the body. Can I talk to you about a bigger problem? You can. Change that hammer for a fluffy toy again. Yeah. A lot of people's fluffy toy is alcohol and drugs. Correct. This is why so many people drink and smoke. Now, I know people that have been desperately unhappy for ten years, but guess what? When they drink, their problems don't disappear what happens is they get anesthetized the uh, alcohol is an anesthetic for anyone listening to this if you drink fair play to you i don't anymore but i did for many years and i used to cover up a lot of my problems with it i've never drunk didn't realize that i was covering my problems up with it but i I don't drink now and i've read a book recently called why alcohol is bad for you and no sorry it's a lie it's by charles mosley it's called why we shouldn't drink alcohol and it goes back to my point it anesthetizes you for that first few drinks it doesn't solve problems it's not medication but it anesthetizes you so again we go back to that man knocking at your door or that woman knocking at your door with a hammer 
change slowly everything you have it turns that hammer into a little bit more of a fluffy toy a little bit more of a fluffy toy but if you're listening to this and you're downbeat and you're upset and you're, you are covering your problems you need to go downstairs you need to face what's going on find out identify who that person knocking at your door is first who is it why is it there because let me tell you if you're depressed upset or suffering with any form of anxiety or mental health there is a bigger problem than what you think. There's something that's that's in you that you've allowed to grow and develop by not dealing with it. Um, example of that is I suffered with huge, huge, huge anxiety um, and I didn't realise what it was. And it was because I was in a job that I didn't like. And I was in that job and I remember I used to sit at my desk and all of a sudden I used to get this very immediate... I might have mentioned on a previous podcast, but I used to get this very immediate feeling of being present. It was like, oh my God, I'm so present. I'm so in the room. I'm so alert. This is quite scary. I'm so overwhelmed that I'm in this office. And it's because I was very anxious because I didn't enjoy that fucking job. And I didn't want to be sat down in an office all day. And I wasn't born. Some people are. Some people love being in an office. Anxiety, I'm not saying you'll get anxiety if you work in an office, but you will definitely get anxiety if you're going against what you are born to do or going against what you want to do and that only started to happen for me in the office after nine to ten months it didn't happen in the first few months because in the first few months i was sort of had that whole new honeymoon period with it where i was enjoying it because it was something new i kind of liked the idea of getting paid by an office on time and i kind of liked the idea of getting up early and going into the office but over time as a human my body was telling me josh this isn't right for you you're not you're not scratching your itches I, was, I wasn't even scratching my itches financially with the job. It wasn't even like the job was paying me brilliant money. It was just... But, but going back to my point, is the, 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 the symptom was feeling very in the room, very alert, very, oh my God, this is oh, trying to catch breath palpitations. But the reason behind feeling like that was because I was doing something that I didn't really want to be doing and I was lying to myself. And this is my way of my body being like, just you don't want to be here. You don't want to carry on with this. I could have gone away and drunk every night and covered up the problem, but I didn't. I dealt with it. I, going back to the analogy, I went down and I opened the door and said, who the fuck is this? It was the job. Don't want you anymore. Go away. <clears throat> so yeah, my parents always make, try to make me like get a job and be normal. And I didn't have to go down that path in order to know that I was just going to come back up that path because it would have been a waste of time. And however, what I realised is through getting a job is that you can't be real pain and experience of pain. You've got to really no. know what it's like to feel pain in order to not do it again. You can't be told not to do something because the concept is it's the same whether you think about the outcome is how you want it or not. It's that same feeling of how you feel right now. Yeah. So I realised through having to clean the fucking restaurant and serve customers in a fucking idiot. Nando's. Yep. Right. I hated the 9 to 5 job and I was so grateful that I did it. Because now I can say, I can't do it, I've done it, and I'm not doing it again. Yeah. Whereas it was always the, I can't get a job. You've never had a job, how would you know? I can tell you right now. And so experience of pain is crucial, which leads on to why you shouldn't take medication unless it's for that short period of time to get your shit together. Because you need to feel the pain in order to know that there's a problem. Go out the door. Yeah, I, I, give him a fluffy fucking thing. Yeah, supposed to know he's at the door. I, 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 shit um, on your lawn bed. I... <laughs> I, I know people that are on medication. I don't want this podcast to be too much about medication. He's knocking for a poo and you're not letting him in because you gave him a fluffy toy. I, yeah, <laughs> well, you don't know he's knocking, you know. And he's growing as well, by the way. By the, every knock that you can't hear is growing him growing, you know. I, d I don't want to sound... I don't, I'm not on there to talk about this. We, we On these podcasts, with whenever I come on here, whenever I talk with you, I actually like the fact that we can talk about whatever the fuck we want. It's quite a nice conversation to have. I certainly need it in my Ch life. Change the topic then. No, no, I want to. I want to finish this topic okay. first. It's, it's. But I don't want people to think, listen to this, and think, well, Josh and Ollie say that medication's bad. No, I, I might have worded how I entered this wrong. Medication is for what its uses are fabulous. Now, what are the uses? It's to numb the immediate pain. If you're about to jump out of a building because this guy in your head is so loud and this noise is so loud. Medication, and fantastic. Medication, brilliant, because it mellows you out and it, it brings you down. Now, I know people that have stayed on the medication, though, okay? And they, 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 you start to become a bit of a zombie. And why would you want to come off something that's making you feel good? 
Why would you want to come off saying, this stuff's, but it's not making you feel good. It's numbing your emotions. It's numbing your, 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 your cortisone levels and all, everything. It's numbing. It's just putting a cover over it. It's giving the guy at the door a fluffy toy. And, and I just wanted to come on and talk to you about that because it's something that I'm passionate about. Like I said, I work in health and fitness. My, my five pillars to life are good sleep, good socializing, good food, diet, good, good routine, you, you know, and good sleep good rest make sure you're resting well i don't and just you know you, you're not getting that from being on medication for too long um and yeah that, that's basically what i wanted to speak about so i'm growing um 12 avocado plants in my bedroom and what i've realized through having these plants is how long it takes for something to manifest and grow yeah i plant these fucking pips in my garden last summer and they're literally only about half a meter how does an avocado plant grow so you put it in water and it swells and then this like stem grows through the middle. It's like an asshole. You open up the cheeks and all of a sudden it comes out. That's where the sprout comes, right? And then all of a sudden that avocado just sort of goes to one side and then it grows and it just gets growing. So the avocado grows underneath. It doesn't, it grows underneath the soil. And so the, the root comes from underneath the pip and then the sprout comes from inside the pip because that is basically a seed. It's a big okay. fucking seed. Anyway, the point of this is that having something to nurture is crucial because like if you haven't got a job or you haven't got a pet or children yeah what else are you going to do in life apart from the same shit yeah. having to go back and care for your your avocado plant and make sure it's watered and remove the cobwebs and the flies eating it and like, yeah, yeah, yeah and then you can't help but like see the thing that you've put time into grow and every day or every week whatever i look at it it's like it's getting bigger it's getting taller the leaves are getting bigger and now you've got a purpose which goes back to the power of a routine amongst sunlight and good water and good food and social life having a purpose in a life that really has no purpose because we're just that avocado just growing somewhere and his job is just to make another avocado you've got to find a purpose and yeah. planting that avocado i've now got 12 in my bedroom i look at them all and i can't wait to put them in the garden in the summer to make it become a tree yeah but it's a long game. Things take so things long. Things take so long. And that's what I just said as well. Curing you know, depression, growing avocado. Anything. Anything. Getting fit, losing weight. But we live now in a, in a society, going back to things like social media, where we are getting immediate gratification from stuff. Going back to social media as an example, Twitter, you put out a good tweet, it gets reshared, it gets spoken about, blah de blah blah You're immediately gratitude. You immediately feel empowered. You immediately feel putting a really good picture on Instagram which gets likes or not even putting a good picture on Instagram you're putting a load of shit the problem is you're putting a load of shit on Instagram and it's getting liked so it's devaluing in our heads time it's like well I wanted that that happened really quickly I want to feel good really quickly what else can I do? really and truly if you want anything it's going to take fucking time and patience is the hardest 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 thing to master because we're so impatient we want results now be patient play the long game understand as long as you as an individual are growing every day in in a way that that is in the right direction of what you want to do then then you're winning then you you are you are you are you take your gratitude from that every day you're getting better every day you're learning every day you're getting fitter every day you're creating a new habit or not even creating a new habit every day you're adhering to that habit that you gave yourself if you give yourself a healthy habit of every single day you're going to only drink one can of cola coca-cola not the three that you used to drink say for instance if you're drinking three cans of coke a day you go down to one a day or you change that three cans of coke a day to one diet coke a day whatever you're doing every day you're doing that you're fulfilling the the habit that you've created for yourself that's that's gratitude because as a human you're getting better you're putting less sugar into your body you're drinking less shit therefore you're consuming less calories and it's like anything, whatever you set yourself as a goal and a long-term thing, every time that you move towards that, that's another win. It might take you five years to get to where you want to be. That one can of Diet Coke might be a part of a bigger process where this one individual wants to lose five stone. But every day you do that method of only drinking one can of Diet Coke, you're getting closer to that five stone loss. Because guess what? Every time you go for a walk, you're burning calories and you've got less calories to burn because you're not putting as much Coca-Cola into your body. Do you understand? I do. <clears throat> and um, people don't get that. People aren't understanding that. They don't think like that. They think, well, I want immediate gratitude now. Um, so every time I find myself looking at a video on Instagram, right, 
I say to myself, get the fuck off that, you dumb cunt. Mm. And I get off it. I agree. Because I know that if I don't stop Aimless right now, scold- it will go to scold- another one, it will go yeah, to another yeah, one, go yeah. to another one. And all this fake dopamine, whatever you want to call the chemical, yeah. it's going to flood my brain that before I know I it, agree. I'm on it for half an hour yeah. and I've gone nowhere yeah. apart from laying in the bed, for example. Yeah, so yeah, now, of course. You're wasting time watching someone else's reel about their day out in London. It's <laughs> bullshit. And uh, it's dangerous having all these like shots of dopamine, like shots of Red Bull to give you that quick high because you might feel that high, but in reality is it's not real. <sighs> Yeah, it's, carry not gonna, on. it's not going to be there. So I'm well aware of the power of dopamine in games and social media and everything. Netflix. I understand the power of it, and it's dangerous. And you've got to enjoy life and watch shit. But like anything, years ago you watched a Christmas film. You don't watch ten in a day. You watch yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's no different. It's discipline. Enjoy your stuff. Have chocolate, but don't have the whole fucking box. Yeah, and, and it goes <clears> back as well. What I was saying, um, which I think is just just crazy. Like social media, I struggle with it because my job involves me being on social media a lot i have to post fitness videos i have to post about football fitness because it's what i do i have to put post clients getting fit you even said to me the other day those people on your story or earlier today those people who do, do you know do you train them yeah the reason i put them on my story is to show people that i'm busy i have clients what i do with my clients is my business is what puts food on my table so i have associated things like instagram and facebook with money so therefore I am on them probably more than I should be. Now, am I always on them doing the right things? Absolutely not. I should be, should be messaging people, posting relevant content, creating relevant content. I spend probably 20% of my time on social media doing what I should be doing, researching relevant content, researching my rivals, what they're doing, scoping out my my rival personal trainers and people like that, copying what some of the good ones are doing in America, bringing their ideas over to here, you know. But then the other eighty percent, I get sucked into that to, to that thing, and there's that 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 thing of looking at shit, looking at ex people, ex girlfriends, Instagram photos, all the shit you can imagine. I've done going on fucking these meme websites and these meme Instagrams, going on uh, just on a massive, massive fucking load of shit. On get caught in a reel where you then go down the reel. Social and media a, bend on. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Social media. <laughs> Going on a social media bender. Yeah, fuck you, where were you? Yeah, and, you and, 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 I, and I wanted it because I'm on my sofa and it's giving me everything that I need. But <laughs> I kind of wish that I didn't have a job sometimes that didn't involve me having to go on that damn app because I know that I have enough in me, enough self awareness to know that it's bad. And if I wasn't needing to be on it i don't think i would go on it and that's the discipline i'd have to give myself like i know i can't have one drink i don't have any and it's the same as social media i know i can't just have one go on it on instagram and look at one thing i need to be on there for an hour you know exactly so you said to me why don't i really do much of my instagram and why do i just not <clears throat> don't give a shit it's because i don't want to be on there all right i yeah. do my podcast i record i upload and i forget about it okay it's done Instagram got to continuously update you're on it as you look at other shit you can't help but stay on those apps yeah. so I post things from time to time but I don't want to be on that I don't want to have mm. an agenda mm-hmm. or purpose to be on Facebook yeah no, on my agenda right. and my purpose is to do a podcast and upload it yeah if I want to start doing shit on Instagram my agenda is on Instagram and I don't want yeah. to be on the phone I don't want to see all the other shit that's on there yeah I agree. as you said 20% is for you doing the right thing 80% is the wrong thing I will be that same person where I've gone on it to send a dm to some person about a podcast and then yeah. some fucking teddy bear talking pops up and before you know i'm looking at the other know, one and then could you get the teddy bear to do a podcast with you it, i mean if there was money involved yeah but um, the point is that it's dangerous i'm a human is. being if i take heroin i'm gonna want more mm. as much as i've got discipline i'll be very I'd well you would, you would be going heroin. again well you'll be going against the quota and the quota is usually you very rarely get a person that does heroin once and it's like fuck me never again and it's the same with social media like exactly. I just said you very get someone rarely get someone I'm just going to do um, I'll tell you what I'm going to do I'm going to time myself I'm going to go for one minute on social media I'm going to get everything I no 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 you so go on one talking for, dog oh, yeah one thing and then I'm on a reel and then before you know it I am that person that I messaged about the podcast gets back to me I've then gone on to their profile to look at what they've done recently I click on their thing I, and it's the, the trap of social media exactly. but let me tell you something about social media as well the other end of it is that it's a beautiful beautiful thing because i have had some of the best quotes and life-changing interviews and life-changing clips and life-changing pictures to last me a lifetime like i've got some of the things that i preach now in my day-to-day life have been shown to me through going on instagram so what do you want i you know something that tom hanks said in an interview recently 
they said, you know, what what's the biggest bit of advice that you would give to a younger self, you know, and it's, it's that this too shall pass. So anything that you're going through will pass and it's not permanent. It's And it's in good things as well. You know, if you think that you're on top of the world and you've completed life and you're finally making all the money you want, that will pass. These, this too shall pass. And that's something that's lived with me ever since I heard it. And I heard that on social media and that has helped me in my darkest times. That has helped me when I felt low. So I can't, you know, it's it's a poison chalice because you can get a lot of good from social media as well. It's like a bacon sandwich, right? Having it every Sunday, you could say that's fine, but when you start having it for breakfast and lunch and dinner and then on the weekend, it becomes dangerous, yeah. right? Why do some people have bacon sandwiches every Sunday? It's a tradition, like roast dinner on a Sunday, bacon sandwich on a Saturday morning after football. Yeah. It's just the pattern. We talked about your football <coughs> career earlier. We did. <laughs> Any questions on that? No. <laughs> um, so, so... I was watching um, this program on YouTube and um, is where they came across this Egyptian tomb and it was about to get washed up because the river was rising so they had to cement the bottom of it and essentially build train tracks to move that whole you know 5,000 year old Egyptian tomb with all the symbols in from being washed away and they put it on a train track and they'd move it to a higher place and I think back and I think to myself there was human beings in there going about their day writing on the wall going for a walk, having sex, eating, drinking, sleeping. What were they doing? Yeah. Like, to think about what was a human being doing back then, thousands and thousands of years ago. Think about our grand, our great-great-grandparents. They'd fuck all to the bottom, like the fire. But thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago, what were they doing? Mm. And it's crazy because, for all we know, there could have been lost societies like this right now, yeah, underwater yeah. in the Antarctic, that we don't know were there. We think we've made an iPhone and a Mac for the first time. But all thoughts come from somebody else at some point yeah, yeah, it might yeah. not have been Dave on the planet 10 years ago with that thought it could have been Kim Blutu, um millions of years ago under the ice that were picking up his thoughts about an iPhone because he's already made one and obviously Antarctic is complete ice and no one knows what's under there I always say to myself there's so many human beings on the planet they can't all be in graveyards no. think about it how many graveyards there are how many humans on the planet like now and, and was there there's more there's like 50 times more humans over the last say thousands of years yeah. compared to now where the fuck are their tombstones and bodies like where are they the, yeah, they're probably yeah. underwater mm, mm, well, where mm. are they going to be they're in the middle of a field like you see King Hang of the Eight Fanny Tesco's car park you know um, under the ground like where are these humans well they over where time does, does a human body not not decapitate like does it not turn into sand and dirt am I being an idiot there no like all um, bone will eventually break down to what you'd call by visually looking at it earth yeah. Mud, dust. What we, we've Bit discussed this. What's your view on dying? That when you die, that's it. But my thoughts that I had whilst I was alive are in the form of energy, and others can tune into it. Okay. But I can't think anymore. Because and what does the show happen? What happens to you then? What is my the body? Just like a tree. It has life. It grows a- 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 avocados, and then when it gets a bit of fungus or whatever, um, it will just not grow anymore so it would just start to get dry and hollow and rot and then over time the water will break it down and it will just disperse as like mud that's what mud is it's just broken down tree which is the same as bone so bone broken down tree broken down if you burn a human like cremate it and burn a tree it's just ash what is ash just like and how we see life. life do you not think this energy that we will transfer to another life will will morph into another body form so I don't think that we will morph into another body. I believe that humans that are born after me can tune in to my energy. So we won't get this again then? No. In my opinion, we can tune into as many people that have already lived, okay, what you could call a past life. Yeah. But there is no afterlife. Okay. And where we will come back with the same consciousness and then relive shit. And what's the deal with religion then? Why do you think religion has such a big part to play in this? Because like like me right now, I'm in my car doing a podcast with you, thinking about dinner, going to the spa. I'm thinking to myself, what the fuck is all this? What's the point? Why am I why am I doing this? Back in their days, they didn't have a phone or a car mm, to mm, mm. to preoccupy their mind from thinking those thoughts. They had fuck all to do apart from to look up at the sky and think, I've had my I've eaten, I've yeah. shagged. What yeah. the fuck are we doing? Why am I here? And and that's it. That, that was that for you know eighty seventy years. Yeah. But he's got his own voice in his head, which he would then call God. Which is just himself saying, why are we here? I don't know, why are we here? I don't know, really, just here to eat and shag. But you've already shagged the other day. 
Oh, what, uh, what, what's your name, by the way? Oh, call me God. Yeah. And before you know it, it's called God. Or yeah. Grandma or Allah. Or no, fucking I, Father I, Christmas. I, 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 get, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> I think religion is certainly a, um, a cultural thing, as in it's, it's certain countries are, are preaching towards it more still. Um, I know that it's in the Western world, as it were, it's dying out, isn't it? But in... in certain parts of africa and it's it's unrivaled you know it's growing it's getting bigger because these people don't have what we have it's also information as well i think with religion information and studies have generationally knocked religion slightly off track i think religion is a good thing though i think religion teaches you discipline i think it teaches you routine i think it's a healthy routine going going somewhere every sunday to show gratitude to what you oh, have in your me. life that's what you i think be is, is brilliant and i actually had a short spell of going to church when i was probably at one of my lowest points because i needed to find something i was fed up i wanted i was recently single i was doing loads of drink loads of drugs and I was hanging around with all the wrong people. And one morning, I was after drinking and heavily doing loads of other stuff. And, and the I, Lord I says, "Josh, this I was isn't you." Fed up, and yeah, it was me escaping. It was like this is just so not me. And I want to. You want an immediate change? I'm like, what's the most immediate thing I can do to change? Right, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find religion. That's that's what I'm gonna do. And and I found religion now because my religion is sport. It's health. It's fitness. It's being a good person. It it's Josh's religion, and it's it's playing football. It's spending time with my family. It's being the best version of myself you know that's the religion that i've created for myself my god is is a future me is 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 a future what i want myself to look like in 20 years that's the god that i look up to um and and the devil is is the bad side of me i know when i drink i turn into a piece of shit and i'm not a good drunk so i know not to drink and these these are restrictions i've put myself in not everyone has the ability to do that i did that through self-discipline not a lot of people have that that's where they need discipline elsewhere um, but I liked the idea of showing gratitude to someone or something every every Sunday. I would go there and I'd just sit there and listen to the vicar speaking, and I would I would do the prayers. And even at times I would look at it and this is a bit this is a bit much. I'll be mean, like this is a lot of yeah, nonsense. These guys are a bit brainwashed, but I went with it because because <laughs> it was the nice in the air. because right. it was a healthy habit because it was a healthy. Habit. The people there weren't horrible. They weren't sitting there being like, "What the hell are you doing here?" These are the greatest these, people that will have you in if you're yeah, on the streets. These, these are people. Your that friends are, wouldn't even have. Yeah, you in. these were people that were saying, you know, well. Welcome. The, welcome to our house. You know, this is going to change your life. And that's what I needed to hear right then. And I remember they were talking a story about how something happened and they saved all these pilgrims. And, da, da, da. and I remember thinking, this is just not possible. And I did, these <laughs> stories are mental. But then what they did is they said, you know, thank you. Know, the, 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 you know, just and it was just before COVID happened. And it was talking about how we should be grateful for the family. You're going to go home and you're going to see your mum and dad. And, and I was thinking, yeah, this is what I need. I need to I need to shine light on the good things and, 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 and veer light away from not the bad Noah things. Brought seven animals on the ark for a flood. And these are stories that have... They, they have good morals about them um, and they have you know thou shall not steal thou shall not da, 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 da. you know don't be a bad person don't lie don't don't think but at the same don't time don't too much on, I on just Sunday feel that I because my brother makes a very fair point I remember saying what do you think of religion? he's well I know religious people that are bad people and I know non-religious people that are good people and I know religious people that are good people and I know non-religious people that are bad people and so you can't I don't feel that religion exempts you from anything um and I think, you know, as I get older, I really, really... St- and I used to say it, but I didn't mean it. And now I mean it much more. That, that, that if it makes you happy, just do it. Like, if, if, if you are religious and it's making you happy... Well, who the hell am I to sit there and say that it isn't right exactly. and it's not and it's not and it's not real? Why the hell would I dispel your 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 happiness? What right have I got to come along and dispel your happiness? And and there's shoes on the other foot. Someone comes along to me and says, Josh, y- your your religion is a load of bollocks. You're saying that your religion is playing football on a Sunday and 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 and, and, and being a good person. You think that not drinking is you being a good person? What 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 other help are you doing for the community? Who are you to tell me that? So as I get older, I definitely, definitely have lots of respect for someone else's life. Whereas when I was younger, I say, "Oh, you know, each to their own." You know, what, not my place. Everyone's got an opinion. Yeah, but in my head, I was probably thinking, "You know, you fucking bit weird." Like well, that's not so. You praying five times a day? That that's not normal. But, but fuck me! If you're finding solace in that, you you do it. You pray <laughs> because that's your thing. Yeah, praying and like say reading the Bible is basically a spiritual person showing gratitude for life and family and I'm grateful for this. If you translate what say a prayer is, you're just giving up gratitude and affirming 
the things that you're blessed for in life. Mm. So you should never knock anybody who's religious because it's just the same thing from a different tribe. Yeah. My tribe called it spirituality. Your tribe called it religion. And these people, as you said, some are good, some are bad, but they are often very content people. Yeah. Really, really find a lot of religious people say in... um. Let's just say Syria, for example. They have literally nothing. They yeah. have they have nothing. Like mm, mm, no, mm. very basic. You call it poverty life, but they have religion. They've got faith. They've got hope that it will change. And yet they might not have the materialistic shit, but they are maybe not happy, but content. I think as well, going back to that, you know, you speak to someone that has prayed all their life and followed a religion. I'm not talking even Christianity. Here. I'm talking any religion. They, f- they use the Muslim religion as an example. They fast every year. They've been doing it for 30 years. You know, that's all they know. And they're 30. 30, 30. And they're living and they're healthy and happy. Say they've been doing it for 30 years and they've lived that religion. Then why on earth would they not? And it's done them well. They've got good jobs or they're happy and they found, and the routine is them praying however many times they need to pray a day. They, they look up to their God and they have all this greatness from following that religion. Why on earth would they even begin? Begin to listen to an atheist standing there being like this is wrong this is they wouldn't so don't waste your energy trying to convince these people the future generations of that family are guess what they're going to be religious as well because they're going to grow up in a society and in a family that believe in what they're doing and that's why religion will always win against atheism because atheism is very new it's very it's very it's it's not deeply ingrained in society um, whilst churches and and temples and synagogues and 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 um uh, uh mosques still exist so will religion and long long may religion continue but the reason i ask your opinion on religion is everyone's different i, I who am i to say that it's wrong that's an interesting um you know how to say tom billy will say um at the end of the end of the show he'll always say something like where do you see yourself in 10 years or what do you plan to give back to the site at the end yeah your little thing could be <laughs> what's your thoughts on religion yeah As you said you get a, such a different thing from each person that could be like a little uh ending um i i also know people where religion has saved their life you know they're at their lowest lowest ebb much where i was look i have a very strong family around me and i've always always loved sport so i've kind of i didn't have to go as deep as some people with religion but i know people that have nothing they don't have a strong family they don't have the ability to play sport and enjoy exercise and to keep healthy so they had to commit to religion and it helped them because it teaches you brilliant things like i say discipline routine um it practices things like research revising you know if you want to be be religious and you're new to a religion say you find religion at the age of 35 or 40 and you're lost before then it gives you purpose you're going to be on websites looking at uh, new testaments oh. you're going to you're going to be practicing what they tell you um and it's just it it, it 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 offers great purpose in religion it really does it gives great purpose and it's great community like i say we went you go to the church and people have invited you for coffee there's a coffee morning in the week and that you go around and do good for society and charity because that's that's the morals of 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 what they do and it, it gives you so much more than just going to church doesn't it it gives you so much more community service service fulfillment, fulfillment. these singing, are things we need all things that we've always had yet we've yeah. forgotten about mm. and take away the word religion it's just an individual human being finding their deepest connection <laughs> yeah which yeah. is within themselves yeah. it doesn't matter what the voice is called but each person who finds that they have found the core version of themselves yeah. which so many people are struggling to find yeah i agree i completely agree completely agree. we'll finish on um omicron will we um i mean do we have to no don't have to if you want what do you want to finish on Finished on your mother's pillow. Um, just, <laughs> um, don't know anything you were particularly uh, on your. Twenty twenty two. What do you think the country is going to look like? Um, I don't, this is the UK. I, I don't give a shit. I'm just going to continue doing me. Okay. Okay. Let's finish on this then. <laughs> what are your views on um, on people living in 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 silence about their worries and problems? I think if they have a reason why they are being silent, for example, the man who says the least knows the most, okay, and they're aware of that, and not just autistic, and they can't speak to anybody, that's fine. It's when you don't have a reason or you can't explain why you are doing what you're doing, 
then there's a problem. So if somebody's choosing to be silent, it means that they don't have anything to say, yeah. or they know that by saying something is going to get a certain reaction that they would rather avoid. So they keep it themselves. Like I can't start preaching all this shit to some football person on a bench or some man at the bus stop because the chances are he's not going to have any idea what I'm talking about. So I no. choose to be silent. Yeah. It doesn't mean that I'm dumb or I haven't got the information. It's just I'm selective with who hears the wisdom. Yeah. Um, does that answer the question? Yes, it does. Brilliant. Um, Josh. And what do you think of Christmas, Oliver? Uh, I think Christmas is a an excuse to have fun, but you don't have to wait for Christmas. Easter, birthday, Christmas, a baby shower, wedding. None of these things last. They always end up in, in shit at some point. There's an excuse to have fun with people and, and to not give a fuck. Yeah. But you can have that any time you want. You could celebrate the avocado coming through the pip and have a party, right? Yeah. Kardashians, they have a fucking party for everything. Like, the kid has just taken his first shit. Yeah, a party. Or the, or the dog is like... Yeah, my kid just got his first haircut. Let's do a house party for it. Woo! Kanye West spends thirty grand on some like yeah, yeah. birthday party because his his kids just like made a first pub or some shit. Yeah. I mean, it's all about having fun and connect. All this stuff comes down to community, people, fun. Forget the alcohol. Forget money. It's one thing in common: going to church, community, people, feeling connected, having a party in the garden, thirty grand down the drain. Connection, community, people, food, toilet. Maybe sex if you want to shag the wife up the stairs, but yeah. it's all the same thing. Football team, connection, people. It all comes down to people. Yeah. I yeah. did this podcast because I want to connect to people. Yeah. Because yeah, no yeah. one around me has this type of mindset. Mm, mm, mm. No, I totally agree. Well, thank you for having me on again. Anything you want to promote? Nope, just good health. If you're feeling low or you're feeling upset, it never hurt to go for a long walk and eat some good, nutritious, colourful food that grows out of the ground. And undraw your curtains. Do not have curtains so you get sun in get the morning. Get some sunlight. Get out of the house. Up. Go for a walk. It's not going to last forever. Or masturbate in the woods. Goodbye. If you're a regular listener, you'll have heard me talk about crypto and how it's the future. I've learned from all my mistakes through trial and error since 2015, and I never make a mistake twice. I was going round in circles investing small amounts that I decided just to trust my intuition and go for it properly with big money. And so I borrowed £7,000 on the credit cards, which was a massively ballsy move, which I would tell no one to do, and got my balance up to 35 k in two months. So I've decided to set up a Discord group where I will inform the group when I'm placing my trade and what coin I'm trading so you can copy me if you wish. I compound my balance but you can trade with whatever amount you can afford to lose. I trust myself and my system enough to trade with a million pounds which I will do one day soon but that's me. You're in control whether you copy me or don't. There is no fee. Join my Discord group to receive real-time notifications when I trade. Link is in the podcast description. Whether you join or not I will still be trading. The only difference is you can do too. Hey y'all, if you've made it to the end of listening to my podcast, would you mind rating me and leaving a review? And if you want to see what I get up to in my days off, then follow me on Instagram. It's yes, King Oliver. Bye.